Good afternoon. We're going to be installing the new three-piece X harness in this older cabinet. Up until 2009, Royal used exclusively a single-piece X harness that traveled from the DMC control board, delivery main controller, all the I'm sorry, delivery mechanism controller, all the way down to the cup where it terminated at the cup and at the uh, not yet there, Mr. Hands. <laughs> at the uh, X motor and X encoder. So what we'll do first off, let's go ahead and travel the length of the harness as it exists in this cabinet now. The single piece harness started up at the control board. It traveled down behind the cable protector which we'll remove using nine screws. It traveled under the delivery bin across to the bottom of the cold door where it went into the cold compartment through a small access hole, traveled across the bottom of the door to where it into the corner and then went up behind the cable protector or the cable guide, I'm sorry, chain guide and behind the LED light. I'm sorry, not the LED light, the fluorescent tubing light. It went over the top of the chain guide, entered into the chain and traveled along until it terminated. Two of the wires terminated at the X motor, one for the encoder and one for the X motor itself. The third of those three wires in that bundle traveled across the gantry through the small harness and then terminated, the chain terminated under the cup and then the harness terminated in the cup. So what we'll do here is get set up and we'll start taking things apart and show you how we're going to take the old harness out. Then we're going to break down the harness kit, show you what's in the harness, then we'll start to install it. First thing we're going to do if there's a cover over the control board, this machine doesn't have one but we've been working in and out of it. We're going to remove the harness protector and the harness protector is simply a piece of metal that goes from the top of the door to the bottom of the door covering the channeling that's created by the uh, anti-theft plate on the outer portion of the door and the cover that we're taking off now. There's nine screws. He'll take them off all the way down. Then we'll be right back with you. And we're back. We've got all the screws out but the last one. Now you're going to take that harness protector and set it off to the side. We'll be putting it back. Sometimes folks want a wire tie to it up at the top as you can see what he's cutting. Alright, we're going to reach inside there and at the DMC board we're going to disconnect P2 and P3. You can easily identify the two harnesses that you're going to be removing. One has nine wires. Each wire is a separate color. The other has eight wires and each color has two of each. You've got uh, two white, two brown, two green, and two yellow. Now as you can see he's disconnecting or cutting all the wire ties that keep the harness into a bundle in the back end of the or tucked into the uh, the channeling. Somebody liked his wire ties on this one. All right, <clears throat> just under that door or delivery bin is a small wire retainer. You'll simply press the forward end of it and it'll release. Now as you can see through that hole there's a small bit of black goop which is a sealant that keeps the warm air from being sucked up into the cold compartment. You're going to need to gently remove that. It does stick to your fingers so if you're in the habit of wearing jewelry you might want to take it off. When you're done you're going to roll it into a ball 
and set it someplace securely because we will be using it again. Okay. All right, continue cutting your wire ties all the way across the bottom. right on into the corner and we probably haven't got them all but we'll come to that as we get to it alright now we have to feed those two harness up through that hole sometimes they're so tightly bound in there you'll find it easier to pull one at a time now we've got the power supply tray loosened. You generally don't have to do that. You'll also find sometimes it's pretty tight getting those plugs up through that hole. Uh, if you know for sure the harness is bad, uh, it's okay to go ahead and cut the ends off and just pull the wires. But be sure you're cutting the right wire. And there we are, we have the first part of it all loosened up. Now what we're going to do is kind of pause right here and we're going to jump to the end. Let's go to the cup. We're going to unplug the cup, disconnect the harness from inside, and bring it all the way back to the X motor. And since you can't really see what he's doing, we'll go ahead and pause the film for now and uh, be right back to you as soon as we get ready. Now we've got that end of the harness disconnected from the cup, but remember we don't take any screws out of the bottom of the cup. All we do is turn the harness loose from the uh, cup harness connector and then we break the chain from its very first link by simply taking a fingernail, popping it in there and pulling it free. Now we've got it loose at that point. We'll come on back to the X motor. Now here's an interesting little older item there. You see the black cap over the harness or over the uh, encoder? Let me get this camera up close for you here. What you've got right there is the old style insulator. The new style insulator is foam. When you go to take that black one off you'll want to be very very gentle because it's been known to pull the encoder off with it and here we got it just exactly what you wanted to do and you'll unplug the encoder unplug the motor now you've got three screws you need to back out one is a Phillips head screw holding the small chain on Save your screws because you're probably going to reuse them. <clears throat> now you've got two that are holding the large chain in place. and another wire tie. There's a small wire tie bracket on there 
it is made of metal Mr. Hand will hold it out for you there it is that is no longer used you can throw that away now the last thing we need to do is remove the large chain from the chain guide again another wire tie and behind it are two quarter inch nuts there we go Now to get that first link off you're going to have to force it. It's not, it's not easily on or off. So fight it. There you go. Now feed the chain carefully between the chain guide and the, the fluorescent tube in the back. Some folks choose to take the tube out. I personally never do. I do it just like Mr. Hand just did. And there's the beast from one end to the other. I think it's about 16 feet long. Looks like a serpent laying around. Don't do like some people I've met and try to think it's just this machine it didn't work in and put it in your desk drawer and reuse it. Throw it away. All right, we're going to pause here and we'll be back showing you the uh, three-piece harness. All right, what we've done is we've broke open the box of part number 355089. It's the four or three piece wiring harness replacement kit. It comes with everything you're looking at. It comes with the wire ties, a set of instructions, the new mounting bracket that's used to adapt the two chains under the X motor. You also have the gantry portion or the small chain section which terminates at the cup. You have the large chain section, which is the middle section terminating at the cup to the bottom of the door, bottom of the cabinet. And then you also have the two other unit, uh, harnesses that will travel from the board. They're called board side harnesses. They go from the board down into the coal compartment where they terminate and plug into the large chain section. Alright, we're beginning our installation. The first thing you'll want to do is identify the ends of the two harnesses on the board side harnesses that actually plug into the board. Those two harnesses are the ends that you want to identify are the white, uh, the bright white connectors. And what you're going to do is feed those one at a time down through the hole in the coal compartment. Again, we have the board, the uh, power supply tray, unplugged. It's not necessary, the, or uh, I'm sorry, unscrewed and pulled out slightly. It's usually not necessary, but if you feel more comfortable, it's only two screws. Just pull it out. And also, by the way, you want to take the fuse out. Once you get the two ends through there, you're going to pull the full length of the harness through. and leave yourself about an inch to two inches on the inside of the coal compartment on the other ends. Alright, looks good. At this point, you can go ahead and put your rubber play play doh, that uh, plumber's dope or uh, black gunk. Now you don't want to push it down in that hole. All you want to do is wrap it gently around the wires and seal it to the top of the uh, the strain relief that's under there, the uh, the wiring harness relief that is in there. There's a plastic ring that goes around it. Now we're going to take the other ends of the harness and
and go ahead and plug it into the boards. Now, we start with one wire tie right at the very top. There is a small hole in the panel. You know where that one is, Bob? All right, the hole that I just indicated to him is your first wire tie. It's also a strain relief. Once you get all the wires around that tie, you're going to want to lift the weight of the harness up towards the boards before you cinch down your wire tie. That gives you no strain on the harnesses on their sockets, and it also gives the serviceman plenty of harness to pull and loosen or uh, to remove the, the boards and uh, work up in that area. Once you get the harnesses set, that's what you do. Now you're going to need about two or three more wire ties along the length of that. All right, as you can see, Mr. Hand has put about two or three more wire ties along the length of it. And you don't want to make these wire ties so tight that it makes a nice round ball because you can't squeeze it down into the channel. What you want to do is make it just loose enough to where it's maybe like a football shape. That way it's flat and long and you can slide it back inside there. You'll want to cut the pigtails off of your wire ties. About knee height there, Mr. Hand. There you go. And now we can push those gently back inside the channel. And all your slack is going to go back up under the bottom of the delivery bin and be captured in that harness tie up under the bottom. All right, now we can put our cable protector back in place and reinstall the nine screws. Make sure you get the top lined up first. That way you won't be off one screw too high or too low. Just like that. And when we're done, we'll be right back. Now as you're putting the screws back into the cover, be sure you're not getting any wires pinched behind it. You can tell that easily by the fact that there's a gap on the right hand side between the shield and the plate that you're screwing into. Uh, it can easily be done because there are so many harnesses running down through there. The problem that's going to cause you is worst case scenario is you pinch a harness in two. Uh, at best or at minimum you're not going to be able to close the door tight enough to get the uh, door switches to actuate. Alright, like we did when we were taking the old harness out, uh, we're done with the board side harnesses. Now we're going to jump to the uh, cup side harness. And what we've got is we're going to have to attach this metal bracket which is used for wire ties here and here for the X motor encoder harnesses. Uh, we need to attach it to this new gantry section, small, uh, small chain section. Basically, you're going to install it this way. And you're going to put the screw in from the back.
spin the self locking nut in on it and do the rest of it with a pair of needle nose pliers and a screwdriver. Now you're going to tighten it up to where it just touches metal. You do not want to crush the metal because you want it to float. So you should have motion right here so that the, so that the harness is able to move. All right. Now we go back to the gantry. Now that we've got the bracket adapted or uh, screwed to the uh, small chain section, we're going to put it on the gantry. and we're going to secure the gantry with one small screw or secure it to the gantry with one small screw that screw will come back out when we put the large chain section onto it so we just put it in there to tighten it up and hold it steady now we're going to run the harness into the cup and attach it now you'll remember in some of the other videos we've talked about the first link on that new harness is the link that screws to the bottom of the cup but since we didn't take that link off of the old off of the cup we're going to do away with that link there we go and now we're just going to attach that chain to the first link and then route our harness for more information on how to route this harness under this cup, uh, please view our video on removing the cup and reinstalling the cup. And we're back. We've got the uh, gantry piece already done. The harness crossed the gantry to the cup. Now we're going to install the large chain portion. The first section of the chain we're going to install is going to be at the chain guide where we took the two nut plates off. Chain guide where we took the two nut plates off. There you go. Alright, I guess Mr. Hands is going to hook up the uh, the X harness first or the uh, gantry portion first. <laughs> Yeah, that one there. <laughs> your, your other end, Bob. There you go. All right. And he'll spin uh, one of those quarter-inch nuts down on it real good to make sure it doesn't disappear or, or flop off. Now, you're not going to want to dress this harness behind the light just yet because once we get the other end connected to the gantry, we're going to need to pull some of the slack out of the harnesses that we have up there. Uh, one of the harnesses will go to the encoder, one will go to the X motor, and then the other one will connect to the small chain portion going out to the cup. Now he's removed the one screw that we had in there just holding it in place and he's going to put two more screws back now you've got a metal threads going into a plastic I guess nut plate for lack of a better term so you don't want to get it too tight but one point of focus that you have to make before you tighten up either of the two is make sure the large chain is straight up and down. And hold on just a second. I've got a better attitude at it. We need, probably need to bring it this way. That's it. That's it right there. Sometimes you want to step back and look at it which is exactly what we did. It looks like it's going to do a whole lot better now. Our next step is to make our connections at the X motor. 
and pull the slack back out of the harness. You want to do the X motor first. Just let that one lay. Or you can pull all three back if you want because it's obvious we got too much there. All right, there's the motor. And the small one is the encoder. Now, the one that's left loose, that one there, goes to the bottom of the cup side harness and the small chain. You'll see where it plugs right in the belly of it. Right there. Now let's pull the slack back out. And what he's going to do is simply grab the harnesses at the other end where we attach to the chain guide and feed the slack at the top back. You want to leave just enough at the top where we can get a wire tie around it and create a strain relief for the socket itself. We don't want the weight of the wires hanging on the plugs because they're liable to come loose and worst case scenario is it actually breaks a pin. Now we'll take a couple of wire ties. Do what, sir? Oh, you want the uh, foam cap? Okay, we've got the large chain connected on both ends. We've installed our foam cap, which we noticed a second ago. The foam cap, if you'll remember, we took the plastic one off. The foam is better insulated. It keeps moisture out. And there's not a hazard of pulling the encoder off as we remove the foam cap. Now, there's usually a cattle guard over this or a cattle cage of some sort that covers it. It's not on this unit. We believe the unit was built before they started using those. So what I did was put a wire tie around it simply to hold it in place. You'll also see that Mr. Hands has connected each of these three harnesses going through here to their wire tie points and he's got them tucked up out of the way, which is exactly what you should do. Now at this point, we're going to go ahead and take the last of the harness and loop it over the back side of the chain guide between the chain guide and the light. Again, some people like to pull the light bulb out. If you do them one at a time, there's never a hazard. If you try to do them all at one time, you might cause yourself some problems. But in any case, they will go back there with a little finesse. Make sure they go completely behind the light fixture. And there you have it. Now, we've got to dress it across the bottom and make our final connections. But we're going to go ahead and put some wire ties. There needs to be one wire tie at the top. The reason for that wire tie is sometimes these wires will start to drift. As the gantry goes up and down, I've seen the gantry grab those wires and actually chafe into them and require uh, a fix of replacing the harness. There are holes back there on that bracket. He's installing one more quarter inch nut there. And there's holes in that top of that bracket that you can use as a wire tie point to hold those three harnesses looping up over the chain guide.
<clears throat> you want to put two in the corner, one right at the very top. Again, the wire tires are used to pull the wires back out of the way and keep them from getting hung on any moving parts. FYI, there's never enough wire ties in the kit, uh, so you'd do well to run by Home Depot and pick you up some. Whatever color doesn't matter. White, black, green, orange, purple. Does anybody want a cat? And you finished it off by making your two connections and wire tying the harnesses together. So again, at that point, they'll be neat and back out of the way. In the newer cabinets machines, this, these connectors will be covered by a metal plate, just like the Y motor is covered by a metal plate. But in this situation, this is the best we'll do. Alright, and that finishes up with the installation. Now, before you're done, you'll always want to double check your work. We're going to take the cup and move it all the way left and all the way right. Now, you see we got a little bump right there. We're bumping on something, so we'll figure out what that is here shortly. But in any case, the cup is going all the way to the wall. Now, let's release the... Uh, gantry. We're going to lower it all the way down and slowly raise it all the way up. Make sure we haven't introduced any binds, any bumps, any bruises. We're also looking at Y harness or the large chain section. That chain section moves straight up and straight down and everything seems to be working fine. Now with it, as with any job that you do You'll want to just double check what you've done. And what we're going to do here is uh, leave you and come back in just a second or two with some function testing to double check everything that we would have affected by changing this harness. All right, we're back. What we're doing now is we're doing some function tests to check the harness installation. Now, because we manipulated the cup with the uh, X harness, we're going to the first step we're going to do is call perimeter test. I'm going to try to follow it. We apologize for the uh, reflection in the glass, but if you watch closely, you're probably going to see it. What the perimeter test does is it tests the physical limits, left, right, up, and down of the gantry to make sure the, uh, the X and Y motors can position the cup as it needs to. It's also going to move the cup through the center. There's no pass or fail indicated to you. It's just a start and a finish. You need to watch it and make sure it does everything it needs to do. So we've already gone to test diagnostics. We've stepped to perimeter test and we're ready to press the pound button which is enter. So watch the cup. You'll see it's going all the way around the door and then through the center testing the physical limits and then ends up right there. That was a good functional test of the X and the Y motor. And again, we're doing it because we changed the Y harness and the, I'm sorry, the X harness and the X encoder harness. Our next step that we're going to perform will be... Now we've moved on to the cup test. The cup test is a functional test of the VIN motor, the plunger motor, and the tachometer. 
If you'll recall, we discussed that in the, um, the removal of the cup section uh, or the video on how to remove the cup. Now we'll test the, the X harness that we installed and those functions. So go ahead and press pound. All right, the successful test is concluded just as you see. The display says test, passed, or finished. And then the uh, plunger extended. It turned for about 15 seconds and then retracted. Why don't you do it one more time for us again? So, three of the five functions of the cup successfully test good. Uh, we'll move on to the last one. We're going to go to sensor test. And we're now at sensor test. There's five bits of information on that display. However, there's only two bits that we're concerned with. The one is MAG, which is the magnetic home sensor. It's zero, which means there is no magnet in front of the sensor right now. And then the second is cup sensor, CS0 which means the LED beam is being seen across the opening of the cup. Now we're going to block the LED beam with our hand or a rag or a cup and you'll see that it changes to a one. Alright, we clear it out, it changes back to a zero. Now the mag can be tested a couple of ways. First off, you're going to have to have a magnetic tip screwdriver or a magnet with you that is of enough polarity or enough enough intensity and um, the correct polarity. If you place it in front of the magnetic home sensor, the mag will change to one. Can't see the door there, big big hands. No, nope, not yet. There you go. He's got the magnet in front of the uh, magnetic home sensor. It's gone back to zero again. Make sure you got it up there. There you go. It keeps moving on you. But the uh, intent is there. Also, learned a little trick last week. Swing the uh, door all the way open if you would, please. On the cup. As you're looking at it right now, you see that screw on the right hand side holding the cup floor down? That is just above the magnetic sensor. That is where he put his magnet to, um, to change the mag from zero to one. There is also in the door of that cabinet, right there under the fifth or under shelf number five, there's a magnet right there. Okay, that magnet right there. If you don't have a magnet with you, I know from experience you can position that cup approximately where you need it on the gantry and push the door closed to where using that screw as a, a, a target or a sight, forward sight, line that up with that magnet and close the door and you'll be able to use that magnet instead of a screwdriver or happen to have one in your toolbox. And that should conclude the installation of the new uh, three-piece harness and the function testing that relates to the X motor as well as to the cup. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact your royal representatives. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. I hope you've learned something.